Okay, I thought I would do a video today um, on the Victron shunt and Victron solar controller uh, and how you view your data through the Victron Connect app. So if I open up the Victron Connect app, uh, you have to have your smart device on Bluetooth. You will see um, your Victron devices. And this first device is my um, shunt. It's called a BMV712 and it has a remote display that you can use, you know, you can just look at versus um, Bluetooth. But the shunt that I advise people to install is the Victron Smart Shunt just because it's an easier installation. It's Bluetooth so you can view it on any of your smart devices and um, you know, it's it's easier. But bottom line, you want to add a shunt, a battery monitoring shunt to your batteries that don't have any sort of Bluetooth uh, BMS capability so you can actually view the data, the information about your battery while you're using it or while you're charging it. It, it gives you the most accurate information about the battery. It's basically like having a fuel gauge on your batteries. So if we pick uh, the BMV, my um, Victron shunt, you'll see that uh, it gives your voltage, current, power, consumed amp hours, time remaining. And I actually uh, installed my Victron shunt with my Lithionics batteries, even though you know, they don't need it because Lithionics Batteries has its own Bluetooth um, BMS. But the reason I kept my Victron shunt is for my starter battery voltage. I, I like to be able to monitor my starter battery uh, as well. So anyway, so if you look at this data, voltage, current, and power, uh, using Watt's Law, which is Watt's power equals volts times amps. So if you take these numbers, if you take volts times current, it will give you this power number. And right now I'm sitting here bulk charging and the current coming in is uh, 2.9 amps. And bulk charging is um, you, the Victron solar controller must see more than five volts over its absorption setting, which mine is 14.4 volts. So that means that my solar panels have to reach 19.4 volts before bulk charging starts. And I like to set my um, Victron devices on live data enabled, so you can just, you know, have more of an at-a-glance look and see what's going on with the battery. So uh, my smart shunt says that my battery is getting, you know, 2.7 amps and my solar controller says that it's producing 2.9 amps. So the difference between this number and this number is just the parasitic uh, draw that is on the batteries because you have a number of things hooked directly to your battery. Like, you know, my, I have levelers, um, you know, the generator, you know, different... Um, let's see what else. Oh, the um, isolator solenoid or the DC to DC charger. There's a number of things connected directly to the battery besides the coach battery switch that supplies the coach. So the difference between what the shunt says is coming in and the um, what the solar controller is, is putting out, that's just, you know, basically the noise level that of usage with between your wires and the battery sitting and everything that's directly connected to the battery. So if we go back to the uh, Victron shunt, so you can see, uh, so this is the current battery voltage. As I said, this is the current coming in from your solar and this current number is a net it's a net number. So as I said, even though the solar says it's it's come, you know, putting out about 2.9 uh, amps, this current is a net number 
of what's going in and what's coming out. And as I said, you know, the things that you have attached to directly to your battery has some small parasitic load. So that difference is basically going out when the solar is coming in. So this is a net of those two numbers. Okay, then if I turn on uh, my battery switch, you see that the current has changed and that's a net current. And, and that change is now the power that the coach is taking to supply, just to load up the 12 volt side. So your fuse panel, uh, anything that you have on in the coach, um, like I just heard my fan, you know, beep on. So that uh, draw, just turning on your coach switch is, you know, about uh, four tenths or half of, you know, four tenths to a half a volt, um, just draw sitting. And if you have your, um, if you had your, so your, um, propane switch on that draws about three quarters of an amp so that would you know that would pull it down even more uh, and then if you turn on like the uh, if I turn on my my fan you can see the current pulled down a lot more I have my fan on high and it takes just a little over three amps to run the fan. So if we go back and look at the solar, I've got 2.5 amps coming in and I'm in the negative on my amps uh, on my shunt. So that means more is coming out of the battery than is going in. And again, that current number is a net. Okay, so I'm going to shut that off. Um, and I'm, I'm not parked in sun. I'm actually almost parked in full shade. So that's why there's not a lot of battery charging going on when, you know, there was demand. Um, but anyway, so, and then uh, consumed amp hour is the total consumed you know, total that you've used, um, that you're using, and then time remaining is uh, calculated on um, the, uh, is calculated on the discharge floor um, that you set in your settings. Time remaining, those two, those two hash marks just mean it's infinite time. And so the time remaining is if you basically, if you continue to um, have that much current, uh, actually, if that current was a negative number, the fact that it's positive means, you know, there's infinite um, battery available because more is coming in than going out. But if the current is negative, then you'll actually get a time remaining number there um, because at that uh, if you continue to draw at whatever that negative current number is, it calculates the amount of time you have before the battery reaches whatever discharge floor setting you put in for your battery. And I use 15% because I want, you know, advanced warning um, when I'm looking at that time remaining. So uh, if I, you know, use it all up, I know I'll still be at 15% and I can see how I want to uh, look at getting my batteries charged. Uh, and then of course my lithionics battery has a 10% never die setting so if I do ever use it down to 10% then it automatically turns off. So when you turn it back on at 10% you still have like 12.8 volts, which is plenty to start your generator, to charge the battery, or, you know, it'll keep the refrigerator going until you can get your battery charging go started, um, any number of things. But that's one of the things I like about um, my Lithionics battery is, you know, it, it doesn't run to zero. It, it, you know, stops and still gives you 10%, so you, you know, can get things going if you have to or, you know, for sure, if you want, you need to start battery charging.
there. But if you look in your settings, these are my settings for uh, my shunt with my Lithionics batteries. And uh, I have my battery capacity, which is 630 amps. And then all the settings below that, they're all the same. So whether you had, you know, a battery capacity of 320 amp hours, 302 amp hours, whatever, whatever the number, whatever your battery capacity is, um, that's a unique number. But then all the, the numbers below that, those are all standard numbers for a Lithionics battery. Um, so these are the settings I use. Um, there's my relay settings there's my alarm settings and i do set my starter voltage so if i you know it can alert me if my engine my chassis battery is low um and then i uh, my display you put this in the order that you want it to show on your display and then um, I don't use miscellaneous or, v, or VE smart setting. Then if you press these three buttons over here, you can go to product info and you can custom name your battery. Uh, you make sure that you're Bluetooth enabled. You can uh, change your pin code. You can check, do an update for firmware, check your firmware, but always enable instant readout via Bluetooth then that way you'll always get a little snippet of data on the very front screen of all your devices. So if you enable uh, live data on all your devices, you'll get this little snippet of data which keeps you from actually happen having to open up the device every time. And then um, on the history on the shunt, I don't really use, but you know, you can. Um, you know, it just, you know, gives you a minimum starting voltage, whatever. It shows you the lowest your battery might have dropped, and the same with your uh, house battery. Okay, so that's really it for uh, the BMV 712 or the, the Victron shunt. Uh, so you can use this data to understand, you know, how much current you're using with your battery, how much charging you have coming in um, because like I said this is a net so it always tells you you know what's the total what's going in what's going out um, and and you can uh, you know figure out what's where you're at uh, in managing your battery and then uh, similarly with the smart solar controller uh, if you have one of those you know, I do recommend, this is a MPPT uh, charge controller, which is much, much more uh, higher quality in um, how it converts your sun power into battery charging power, uh, much more so than the GoPower or ZAMP PWM solar controller. So I do, you know, recommend to people to replace their solar controllers with a higher quality Victron smart solar controller because, you know, you can get as much as 30% more power harvest from your solar panels with a Victron smart controller. Anyway, so it tells you what your solar panel voltage is. Uh, it tells you what the current is that the solar panels are producing. And remember, the solar panels only produce what your battery needs. So eventually when my battery changes from bulk to absorption to float, the amount of current that's being produced to charge the battery will go to zero. That's how you know your batteries are 100% charged is when they're not taking any more charging current. Um, so as, uh, as I said, uh, these are the voltage of your panel. This is the current your panel is producing. Then the solar controller converts that to battery voltage that your battery can use to uh, accept a charge and get charged with, and the current that's related to that voltage. And then it identifies whether it's in you know, bulk absorption or float charging. 
Uh, and if you go to the history, it shows you um, a history of what, you know, what happens day by day uh, with your solar panel. So like yesterday, um, I used 100 watts all day um, just to maintain my batteries. And, and yesterday I was over here and had the lights and stuff on. So, of course, it was a little higher. But you can see basically it only takes 90 watts to 100 watts just to maintain my 630 amp hours of lithionics batteries and my starter battery because I have um, a trickle charger on that. So whenever my house battery is being charged, my chassis battery gets charged. Uh, and, and the two that are most common um, that are available right now would be a Xantrax Echo Charge or an 18 amp Victron Orion TR DC to DC charger. Those are two um, chassis battery trickle chargers that you can add so that your engine battery automatically stays automatically charged whenever your house battery is being charged by solar, by the inverter battery charger, you know, however you're charging the battery, anytime. Uh, and then down here it shows what my maximum uh, battery voltage, you know, was throughout the day. And then also the minimum. And the minimum is usually the resting voltage at night when, you know, nothing, you have no charging going on if, you know, if you're just using solar and you're parked. Okay, so I think, uh, I think that covers everything. Um, I hope this provides uh, a lot of good information for people to understand how they're using their, how to use their batteries. Um, how to understand the information from a Victron Smart Shunt or a Victron Solar Controller if they have them.